How does this work? How can you just strum the strings on the guitar and the amp spits out that awesome electric guitar sound? Well, when I pluck a string, I set it into motion. It moves this way and then at some point the tension in the string pulls it back the other way. But it carries it past its starting point and comes over here. And then the tension in the string will pull it back the other way and it comes over here and then tension pulls it back. And this process goes on and on. The string goes back and forth hundreds or even thousands of times. In a couple of weeks, I'll be releasing a video on how acoustic guitars work. And there I'll explain the interesting ways in which strings vibrate. Now, strings vibrate essentially the same way on acoustic or electric, but the difference is in the way they are amplified. Acoustic guitars project sound directly from the body, whereas electric guitars use, well, electricity. Now, first we need to convert this vibrating string into an electrical signal. Now, to do this, electric guitars have something called pickups. And in the pickups, underneath each string, is a little magnet called a bobbin. And wrapped around these bobbins is about half a mile of very thin copper wire, thinner than a human hair. And something else interesting is that electric guitar strings are magnetic. So let's take a side view of an electric guitar pickup. Here is a bobbin, here is a string, and here is the copper wire wrapped around the pickup. Now the bobbin produces a magnetic field that looks like this. But the string is also magnetic, so it can interfere with this magnetic field. And as the string moves down, it compresses the magnetic field. And as the string moves back up, the magnetic field can stretch out again. So as the string vibrates up and down, it creates an oscillating magnetic field. The magnetic field of the bobbin vibrates with the string. Faraday's law tells us that a change in magnetic field creates a change in electric potential. What does this mean? Well, as the magnetic field compresses, because the string moves down, an electric current is produced, traveling out of the page. And as the magnetic field stretches out, because the string moves up, a current is driven the other way. So this creates an electric current that goes back and forth, in and out, called an alternating current. So vibrating strings creates an oscillating magnetic field, creates an alternating current. Now the exact reason for why all of these happens is extremely complicated and beyond the scope of this video. And there will be a few things like that in this video, just too complicated to explain the reasoning behind why they happen. Anyways, now most guitars have two or even three pickups, and that's because the vibration of the string at different points along the guitar sounds different. Now I'll explain this more in my video on acoustic guitars, but essentially pickups closer to the bridge give a higher twangier sound. Now, this switch right here actually controls which pickup I'm using. So if I use this pickup, it sounds like this. But if I use this pickup, it sounds like this. Now, in short, there are three main stages to the amp. Now, after we get this original alternating current inside the pickup of the guitar, it has to be sent to the amp via this cable. But once it gets to the amp, the signal is pretty weak, so it has to be amplified to a usable level using something called a preamp. Now, in stage two, that electrical current is modified by using all these different knobs here. And then finally, it goes to the amplifier part of the amp, which drives the speaker. But how do all these knobs work? How do they modify the sound that comes out of the guitar? Let's start by looking at a knob called the gain. Now this is what it sounds like if we slowly turn the gain up while playing the guitar. As you can see, it gets louder and more distorted the higher the knob. Now, the gain is like a volume control, but for the preamp. It determines how much of that original signal coming from the guitar is being amplified in the preamp. So it's a volume control, but it sounds different than just turning the volume up. Let's visualize the current as a wave, like so. 
Now the peak represents the point when the electricity is moving the most this way, and the trough represents the point when the electricity is moving the most this way. Remember, it's an alternating current moving back and forth. Now the preamplifier really isn't meant to amplify the current that much, just a little bit. So when you turn up the gain past the true abilities of the preamp, it ends up distorting the peaks and troughs of the waves, shearing them off in a process known as clipping. Now this clipping process adds a whole bunch of inharmonic and harmonic overtones, which creates that gritty sound. <laughs> So now, after the current has left the preamp, you can then fiddle around with all these knobs to change the overall sound of the guitar. For example, you can change the bass and the treble, and on some speakers, the mid-range. So if you turn the bass all the way up and the treble all the way down, well, then the amp will saturate those lower frequencies so they are more audible, and as a result, it will sound lower. <laughs> can switch them, bass down and treble up to give it a higher sound. And lastly, different guitar amplifiers have different voices and effects. Now the voice is the overall tone of the instrument. Now this amp has four different voices, tweed, black panel, British, and metal. Tweed creates a clean and rich sound with low and mid-range frequencies. Black panel sounds similar, but slightly higher and crisper. British is tighter and chime-like, with more emphasis on the treble. And metal sounds like, well, metal. A gritty sound with emphasis on the bass. Different guitar amps have different voices to choose from as well. Then there are all of the effects. Now this guitar amp has reverb, meaning it's simulating the sound reverberating off the walls, so it takes longer to decay. And as a result, even after you stop the strings, the guitar still sounds. <laughs> Now the chorus effect simulates multiple guitars playing at once, and it does this by taking several very similar pitches playing at very close times, and our ears hear it as unison as a fuller sound. Now flanger is actually really cool. It takes a copy of the original sound and moves it back and forth just a few tens of milliseconds, so it creates this really cool sliding effect. Reverb and delay is the same as reverb, except the sound repeats itself. The wah-wah creates a sound that is best described just by listening to it. Vibrato makes it seem like it's vibrating by moving it up and down in pitch. And tremolo makes it sound like it's trembling by moving it up and down in volume. Now all these different voices and effects are caused by different electrical processes occurring inside the amp. 
Now, it gets very complicated, but really all the amp can do is modify the electric currents coming from the guitar after it reaches the preamp, or except in the case of the gain, which modifies the preamp itself. But after that current passes the preamp and is modified, whatever that signal looks like, that is the signal sent to the speaker. And that is controlled by the volume knob. Now, the volume knob controls the main amplifier. The more you turn up the volume knob, the more amplified the current. And this current is then fed into a speaker, which outputs the sound. So a more turned up volume knob equals a more amplified current, and a more amplified current creates a louder sound. And keep in mind, every time I say that the current is amplified, it requires electricity to do so, which is why the amp is plugged into the wall. So that's a basic description of how electric guitars work. But what about acoustic guitars? Well, my next video will be focused not only on how acoustic guitars work, but also on how strings vibrate, how different strings and frets can create different pitches, and as well as an overall description of how stringed instruments work in general. So stay tuned for that video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.